Good morning. On behalf of Bishop Jenke, Bishop of Peoria, Bishop Tilka, the coadjutor Bishop of Peoria, and Father Bill Miller, the rector of this church, I welcome you all this morning to the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception. What a great joy it is to celebrate Christmas Day Mass together here. Just a few announcements for our, to help our liturgy move more slowly, move more smoothly today. Hopefully not too much slowly. <laughs> You're kindly reminded to silence all electronic devices during our sacred liturgy. Flash photography is permitted, but we ask that you please remain in your seats. Due to the COVID restrictions, we will not have an offertory or gift procession today. If you wish to leave a donation and offering for, to this historic cathedral, baskets are available for you on your way out. For the distribution of Holy Communion, there will be four stations in the center. Two in the very center will distribute only to those wishing to receive communion on the tongue. And the two just off to the sides will distribute only to those wishing to receive on the hands. We ask that those seated in the side aisles go first by going to the back and then walking down the center aisle. Once they have received, the ushers will dismiss the center pews as usual. Please rise.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred day radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires 
and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, to, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to, the, to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord.
It is a joy to celebrate Christmas here at the cathedral, uh, my first Christmas as a bishop. I uh, had uh, made a joke yesterday afternoon, my first Christmas Mass in the diocese was at St. Jude Parish at 3 o'clock. I had seen a number of families as they came into church, a couple of them with uh, carrying baby bassets with uh, their young children in them. Uh, and so I had made the joke that for often when you have a newborn baby, you have an ornament that says baby's first Christmas. Maybe I should have planned and gotten an ornament that said Bishop's First Christmas. Father Hennehan and O'Brien then said to me after Mass, I better watch out. I'll probably start getting a bunch of ornaments in the mail that say Bishop's First Christmas. I may need to get a bigger Christmas tree next year. But it is a joy to celebrate this great feast when we are once again reminded of the greatest gift we've been given, which is our Savior Jesus Christ born into our world to save us. Recently, I was in a conversation with several priests, and we were talking about uh, preparing homilies, especially preparing homilies for great feast days like Christmas and, and Easter. And one of the priests said to me, you know, Bishop, you're kind of lucky. You just moved and therefore you get to recycle all your old Christmas homilies because you get to talk to people who haven't heard them before. I'm not gonna recycle an old Christmas homily, uh, but I am gonna build on one that I did give a couple years ago. A few years ago, I had visited a family in the parish and they were telling me how uh, their three young children uh, really enjoyed playing with the manger scene and taking the figures out. And then they would, of course, add figures into the manger scene. So there were Barbies and Star Wars figures and such that came to visit baby Jesus. So much so that they had to get a different nativity scene because the one that they first started to play with was a family heirloom and they were afraid that the young kids would break it. And so they did get one that was a lot more kid friendly that they didn't have to worry about. And that homily that I gave a few years ago, and I talked about how I thought that was a good idea to allow the kids to play with the figures so that they would become more familiar with the story of our Savior's birth. After all, we don't need a theological treatise on Christmas. We simply need to tell the story. The story that God loved the world, that he sent his son into the world to save us. Apparently, some young kids had heard that homily, which is where the new part of the homily comes today. Last Christmas, after Christmas, I was talking with a different family. Their kids, too, had decided that it was good to play with the figures of the manger scene. And that family had said that they had a tradition that when they set up the house, they decorated the house after Thanksgiving, as we even sometimes in the church do, they kept the figure of baby Jesus and set it aside to await Christmas, that the figure of Jesus would go into their manger. When they gathered as a family for dinner on Christmas Eve, they would gather around, put the figure of Jesus into the crush, say a prayer, and a little blessing. And so apparently last year, when they set up their crush earlier in the season of Advent, which also was a way to remind the kids about what Advent is about, preparing, waiting, longing for the coming of Christ, they had set the figure of Jesus aside as they had done previously, but unbeknownst to mom and dad, one of the kids, the little girl, at some point took the figure of Jesus. She took the figure of Jesus and brought it to her room. She had made a little space in her dresser and she had wrapped the figure of Jesus in a washcloth to keep him warm. On Christmas Eve last year, as they were getting ready and family was gathering, they went to where they normally had placed this little figure of Jesus so that they could do their family tradition. 
of course, discovering at that point that Jesus was missing. This kind of threw mom and dad into quite a panic, wondering what had happened to the figure. And they began to kind of tear the house apart to find where Jesus had gone. And finally, the little girl realized that she should fess up. And so she said, well, I know where Jesus is. And she brought her mom and dad to her room and opened up her dresser drawer. And of course, there still was the figure of Jesus wrapped in the washcloth. And she said, I took Jesus because I wanted to keep him protected and warm until he came. She just simply had forgot that now was the moment that they should celebrate that he came, and so he was still in the dresser. But she had took, taken the figure of Jesus to protect him and to keep him warm. I think of that story in particular because of the year that we have been going through. This year that has been a great struggle for so many because of the COVID-19 pandemic. How our lives have been so altered. And yet, even in the midst of all the gloom and doom of dealing with the pandemic, the reality is that there have been so many who modeled what that little girl did, which is to take care of one another. For Jesus tells us, as often as you do this for one of my least brothers or sisters, you do it for me. I think of the many, many people in many, many different ways, from the doctors and nurses in the hospitals, to those who work in the nursing homes and assisted living facilities, to the families who have taken care of loved ones, to those who are simply helping us to get through day by day in the grocery stores and delivering things, teachers and students and principals doing remote learning, all kinds of people have gone, kind of stepped up in a way that models taking care of one another, of offering protection and love. And even here in the church, so many have stepped forward just so that we could have moments like this to come back together safely in order to celebrate our faith to be encountered by the Jesus who came to save us in word and sacrament. There's so many ways in which not only this past year, but really throughout all of our lives, we have to learn even more so how important it is to take care of one another. And in doing so, we take care of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as I was thinking of that the other evening, the thought occurred to me, who takes care of who? As much as we're taking care of one another, is it not the Lord who takes care of us? Isn't that why we are here today? God so loved us that in order to take care of us, to take away our sins, he sent his son into the world to offer us his love and mercy and to model for us the way of life, the way of love, to take care of Jesus by taking care of each other because we have been taken care of first by our Lord and Savior, God with us. In the conversation that I had after Christmas last year, at the beginning of the year when this family was relating the story of how the little girl had taken the figure of Jesus and put him in her dresser wrapped in the washcloth to be protected and kept warm, the dad said to me, I was so proud that my daughter on her own thought of how important it was to take care of Jesus. May that be the message of Christmas this year. May that be the promise that we make to live as Jesus' disciples, to take care of one another because Jesus has taken care of us. He is the one who offers protection. He is the one who gives us warmth for he is God with us and God loves us and so may we do the same.
And together now, let us pray our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we rejoice in the goodness of God. With trust, we present these needs to our Father in heaven. That the church may joyfully proclaim the birth of our Savior and transform the world through word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth among all the nations and within every heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the bonds holding our families together will be strengthened as we celebrate the birth of Christ in heart and home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are away from their loved ones today may be filled with Christmas peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may be greeted by God's loving mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, which is for the living and deceased parishioners of St. Mary's Cathedral, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in our hearts, joined to those of Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, and all the angels and saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continuing purification of the Church, its clergy and people, and for religious freedom for Catholics in America and throughout the world, let us say together the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael. Michael the Archangel. Defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Eternal and almighty God, you revealed your face to the world in a little child in Bethlehem. Hear these prayers, which we make in his name, Emmanuel, God with us, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say your word, and my soul shall be healed. for the distribution of Holy Communion, there'll be four stations in the front. The two in the center, Deacon and myself, will only distribute to those wishing to receive on the tongue. The two to the sides, Stephen Berlinger and Bishop Liu, will only distribute to those wishing to receive on the hands. For those that are not Catholic or unable to receive communion at this time, we invite you to come forward with your hands over your chest like this to receive a blessing.
and let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we, who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity, may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Janke and myself, Father Bill Miller, the rector of our cathedral here, uh, we wish you all a very blessed and holy Christmas. Uh, may the joy of this day remain throughout the coming year. Uh, may we always remember that it is the Lord who watches over and protects us. And a word of gratitude to all those who uh, helped us to celebrate Christmas today, who have done so much uh, to make sure folks could be with us online, uh, to live stream the masses, uh, not just this mass, but uh, all the masses of the cathedral this weekend, this, not weekend, this uh, Christmas holiday. Um, so many folks, uh, not only here, but throughout our diocese and all of our parishes, have put in a great deal of effort so that we could celebrate Christmas in a very safe uh, and holy way. And so thank you to all the volunteers who have, have made that difference uh, in our lives this year. The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the virtue, light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, that of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu.